Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this fine, wonderful day that God has made. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, we're going to have some uh, announcements here, and there is a series of announcements. Uh, make sure you take a look at your notes, too, but um, we are having a contemporary band practice. We need people to join in, and again, more voices cover up those voices of ours that aren't quite as well good, so please come and join with our bands on the services on there. And next Sunday, a very important Sunday for those of us that have children in confirmation class. That is a mandatory meeting for next Sunday that is taking place um, on there, and that would be after, after fellowship. So just stick around after fellowship. And then uh, we need Sunday school volunteers. It's a very, very important part of our aspect with growing with our family and our life here, and a lot of responsibility. I believe, though, that all the teachers who, when they look back over their history with teaching, look back and say, it's probably some of the best times in their life for what they've done. So please, please, men and women, we need teachers there. Um, I believe this is all for announcements. I, um, Nancy Nord passed away this week, and uh, we, um, we would like to uh, embrace their family as they go through this moment of struggling with Nancy. She's in heaven right now, and I remember one time that she was playing, I believe the first time I ever saw her play the organ was in Zion with the old pump organ in there, and she was playing along, and, and that organ was missing stops and keys and everything, but she was playing it beautifully. I would imagine that when she's in heaven now, that organ is working much, much better, and she's really sounding super great on that one. But So uh, we, uh, we thank uh, God for having Nancy in our presence, and, and we hope their family is doing well through this little journey here with them. Uh, we have uh, Greg would like to speak. To, I'd like to ask Greg to come up and speak a little bit on our choir. We need members of the choir, and Greg is going to help us maybe in, bring, entice more people here. <laughs> Good morning, church family. Uh, a little something about being in the choir. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to serve, to be able to participate in the church service. Um, you take it with you during the week. You you. You remember the songs when you go to sleep at night. It, it carries through, and it's, it's a special joy to be just a part of the choir. You make friends up here. We miss being out in the congregation, though, too, because then we don't get to mix and mingle with you guys out there. But, you know, we do our best. But uh, it's, it's really a fun opportunity to be able to sing, to be able to, to worship in a different method. You know, you can hear a message, you can, you can talk to people, but when you sing, it really, it goes deeper, and it's a lot of fun. And I, we really enjoy the people up here. We invite anybody who's got, you don't even have to have talent. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if I can be up here and sing, so can any of you. I've, I've got little or no talent. My wife's way better than me, but, you know, it's, it's not about the quality, it's about participation. And that's the, the super important part about being part of a church family is, is where can you participate and where can you plug in? So please think about that. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, along with your bulletins and things, there are a fill out sheet here and we'd like to have you fill it out mainly so that we know how many packets of music we need and what we need for lunch and everything like this. But uh, just a, a note on that, uh, sometimes people think that with choir, I got to make a commitment, lifetime or a long time commitment. You know, it really doesn't matter if you just jump up right now, if one or two of you jump up and sit here with a choir for a day or two or three or not every, periodically, we just enjoy having you. So just because most of us are here every Sunday, it doesn't mean that someone can't come and join us for a week or two here and there and everything like this. So. And one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know how I could have mentioned and missed it, looking out the doors, we're seeing an absolutely wonderful, beautiful parking lot. Congratulations to all of you who made that parking lot possible. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a phenomenal endorsement of where we are as a church, as a church family. So that's uh, what we've got there for announcements. Oh, one more announcement. Uh, one of my daughters looked at me and she asked me how long the service was going to be today. And I said, oh, hour and 15, hour and a half, somewhere in that typical, you know, typical Sunday. 
And she said to me, she said, well, you don't look like you've got a notes to go for an hour and a half. And I said, no, I don't right now, but if I talk real slow, we might last an hour and a half. So if you see me talking too fast, tell me to slow down here. So, so much for the announcements and the start of our service. Let us uh, begin, stand if you're able, and we'll have our greetings. The Holy Spirit calls us together as people of God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We confess our sins together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy, come to our aid. When we hide brokenness and only show you wholeness, forgive us. Shame and guilt with pride and pretense, forgive us. When we point out the speck in our neighbor's eye, but ignore the log in our own eye, forgive us. When we choose old, harmful ways, life-giving ways, forgive us. Transform us by the power of your spirit, Lord God, and make us new. Children of God, God loved us even when we were dead in sin and makes us new through Jesus Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Live as people set free. may be seated. Let us pray together. Gracious God, 
your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread of the world. Give us this bread always, that we may live in us, and we in him, and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body and world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Ephesians 4. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer and must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesomeness talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you have sealed for the day in redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Following God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Today's gospel is taken from John chapter 6. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven. Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up on the last day. It is written in by the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and yet they died. But here is a bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. You may be seated. Kids, I welcome you to come up front for a children's sermon. Hopefully it's going to be a fun one. I've got a little game planned. But first, I would love to hear anything exciting or fun that you've gotten to do this summer? Would anybody like to share? <laughs> That's okay. 
Um, so, I saw this game on a TV show once. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but maybe it'll be familiar. So, how it works is I have a series of pictures printed out on pieces of paper here, and we are going to guess how much each of these items cost. And whoever guesses close wins, which might be a little difficult, so I also want to add that the congregation can help too, if we need some help. All right, are we ready? The first one might be the easiest. I'll show you the picture and then I'll show the congregation too. Do we recognize this one? For those in the back, it is a package of Oreos. Does anybody want to take a guess if you went to the grocery store this afternoon, how much would this package of party size Oreos cost? Any guesses? And it's okay to be wrong. Jacob? He guessed $3.99. That might have been pre-inflation, but it's more expensive now. <laughs> Any other guesses? Maybe someone from the congregation who buys groceries for the family? $6.99. You are exactly right. Whoa. To the cent. <laughs> Greg might have bought some Oreos yesterday. All right. Here's the picture of the next one. Can anybody tell me what this is? Is he? An iPad, actually. So this is like a tablet that you can use to draw things or go on the internet or type. Does anybody want to guess how much this costs at Walmart? Yeah? Six dollars? More than six dollars. Wait, what was your guess? Oh, six hundred. Actually, that is really close. It might, it actually, it's cheaper than, this one's cheaper than six hundred. More than sixty-eight, but that's a good guess. Joe? That is exactly right. <laughs> He definitely did not buy an iPad this week. <laughs> Maybe he saw my children's sermon notes, though. All right. Here's the next one. Can anybody tell me what this picture is? A wedding ring. Yup. And not a simple one. This is the type we might see on The Bachelor. Very expensive. All right. Any guesses how much this beauty costs? Me? See, do you got a guess? One million dollars. Izzy and Macy guess a million. Not quite. Yeah, <laughs> definitely less than a million. Any other guesses? Debbie guessed 13000 not quite, still significantly less. Less than 5000 Last guess. More than 500 This is actually a $2,000 wedding ring. Still pretty expensive. All right. A few more. Yep, this one's a car. <laughs> this one stings a little bit because the engine just died on my car. So this is the one that we're actually looking at buying right now. <laughs> Anybody want to guess how much this one costs? A little bit less than $34,000. you are in the right range, though. Sixty-eight. I wish. I really wish. Anybody else? Hey, you're really close. This one is 29. We're going to get an older one, not this exact one. But this car <laughs> is 29,000. All right, here's a fun one. 
a tractor. Yeah. <laughs> we maybe have some people in the congregation who drive a tractor like this. <laughs> it's a red one for those of you who are wondering. <laughs> Anybody want to guess how much this big guy costs? $650,000. No, well, this one isn't brand new. No, this, this one's a little bit older. How many? <laughs> That's a question from a true farmer. <laughs> Does anybody want to guess how? So this one's got not regular tires. This is a fancy one. We'll take one guess. It has at least three zeros. Yeah, it's a tractor. Uh huh. Henry, does your dad have one like this at Lodemeyer's? No. <laughs> Any guesses? This one is $230,000. Is that a lot of money? That is a lot of money. All right, the last one for today. And if you've noticed, each of these pictures is getting increasingly more expensive. So this one I'll have to explain a little bit. It's a building. It's actually somebody's house. And do you know what? This is supposedly, according to Google, the most expensive house in the US. Does anybody want to guess for fun whose house this is? Not the White House, even though it, it does kind of look that way. Oh, yeah. Uh, not Taylor Swift's house. That's a good guess. Not in Vanderbilt. I think maybe he's the owner of Amazon? Question mark. Jeff Bezos. So this is Jeff Bezos' house. Does anybody want to guess how much money he spent when he bought this? Jacob, more than two million, a lot more than two million, more than 60 million, Isaiah, more than 5,000, oh yeah, not billion, no, but you're close if we change to something around a little bit, good guess, oh, uh, Levi, more than a hundred million. Yeah, Eleanor, not seven hundred million. Close. Actually, it's one hundred and sixty-five million dollars, according to Google. Now, the reason we played this game is because I wanted us to think about how much value that things have. And my next question is, what do you think God thinks is the most valuable thing in all of creation? Yeah, the most valuable thing in all of creation. Any guesses what that might be? Caleb, do you have a guess? Do you have a guess? No? Izzy, let's hear it. She got it exactly right. I'm going to repeat it. She said, all of us. Yes. To God, we are the most valuable thing in all of creation, so much so that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to live, die, and rise again so that we can be with him forever and ever and ever. Now, why do you think God did this? Because it was a big sacrifice on his part. Way more than $165 million. God did this because he loves us. All right? So that's the message for today. Each of us, you and me, we are the most valuable thing in all of creation to God because he loves us. So anytime we have a thought or a need or a care on our heart, we can come to him and trust that he's listening and that he is going to move heaven and earth on our behalf. Sound good? All right, let us pray. Dear God,
Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We know how much you love us and how valuable we are to you. Thank you, God, for your great love. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. Thank you, Nicole. I could not do a children's sermon, so thank you, thank you, thank you on that one. Those of you that have heard me talk be before know how appreciative that I am that I was not born prior to Jesus. The Bible and all the metaphors with God, uh, dealing with the Bible and things like that, are way above my head and today's gospel is full of them. I feel it would be almost impossible for me to understand the Bible if I did not know the story of Easter week. Jesus did die on the cross for each and every one of us so that we can spend eternity with him. The gospel today is a perfect example of the old idiom, you cannot see the forest for the trees. In this gospel message, Jesus is walking among the Pharisees, being Jesus, talking, healing, educating, and loving. The Pharisees are clueless who he really is. I would most likely would have been among the crowd listening to Jesus, but not understanding or even maybe even trying to understand Jesus and the message of eternal life with him. A message that is available to all of us by asking and believing in him. Jesus said to the Pharisees, the one who believes has eternal life. This is a very simple and straightforward message. It is us who sometimes try to complicate our relationship with Jesus. The band YouTube sings a popular song that most of us have heard or maybe even sung along with the refrain. In the song, the lead singer Bono is searching for life's answer and the refrain goes something like this. And I still haven't found what I'm looking for. That's the reason why everyone can be in choir right there on that one. It might take an hour and a half at service if I try to get it so it would be right. So anyhow, that's what, but I think you all get my drift. Um, Bono still hasn't found what he's looking for. Maybe you and I and some of our friends have been in the same predicament as the Pharisees and Bono. We have been looking all around us for the answer to life, and the answer is right in front of us, Jesus. We do not have a relationship with Jesus because for whatever reason, we have not asked him to enter our hearts and become our partner in life. Our relationship with Jesus starts with believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that without God's grace, we are lost. This humble beginning is a basis for an ongoing relationship with God. Have you ever had a relationship with a person that started out very casually? as you spend more time with them and get them to know them better, and then one day you realize what an incredible friend they are. A friend that gives you something that is maybe difficult to describe or quantify, and yet provides something that we need and crave. The same thing can be said about our kinship with Jesus. And just like a relationship with someone here on earth, this connection with Jesus starts with spending more time with him and getting to know him. Jesus is the bread of life for eternity, but he is also the bread of life for now, today. It is through our association with Jesus that we can have more peace and more tranquility here on earth, even before we meet him in heaven. You may or may not agree with me, but I think the world that we live in is crazy and getting crazier by the day. To me, the world seems like watching children trying to stand on an air mattress in a swimming pool. Nothing in our world is stable. Boundaries no longer exist. No solid walls or fences to hang on so that we can see, rest, and regroup our thoughts in this hectic world. This is where our relationship with Jesus can help us. Jesus is unwavering. Whatever the world does, good or bad, he is the constant in our life. God is always there to talk to, a lifeline to rest and regroup our thoughts 
someone who loves us beyond our comprehension. Have you ever got caught up out of sorts in a situation that does not have any solutions? It may seem like emotionally or physically we are at the end of our rope. The next time this happens, try taking some time and talk to God about the situation. A measure of peace and solace may replace the angst and emotional feelings that we are battling against. This feeling of peace may not last, but I believe the more we involve Jesus in our everyday life, the smoother the road of life will be. The steep hills and the deep valleys that we encounter during our life's journey will be much more manageable. I am not saying that the road of life will be perfect. I am saying that with our Heavenly Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, as our partners, our time on earth will be much more manageable. Now here is another idiom for the day. What I've said so far is an example of preaching to the choir. Most likely, most of us within this building already have an ongoing relationship with God. God is our partner in life. God is all around us, wanting to be with us in everything we do. God just is waiting for an invitation. So here is our challenge. How can we get our family, friends, neighbors to have the same wonderful relationship with God that we do? I marvel at the enthusiasm of the Seventh-day Adventists in sharing their faith with total strangers. Sharing my faith with others is an area that I struggle with in my personal faith journey with God. With so much to lose, eternity, you would think that I would do a much better job at telling and sharing the Jesus story. And I believe that I am not the only one that struggles with sharing God's message. Maybe we need to ask God for more help in encouraging us, it, to, for encouraging us when it comes to inviting people to our St. Luke's family, God's family. What would happen if each of us were to ask one person per week to come and visit our wonderful church and hear about God? What would happen if we see new people or infrequent visitors to our service and we went out of our way to visit, get to know them, and thank them for being part of our celebration and encouraging them to come back? And I am not saying that as a family of St. Luke's that we are not doing these things, but what would happen if myself and more of us were a little less shy and were more active in encouraging people to join us in this wonderful relationship with God? I know the answer. The world would be a better place and God would have a great big smile on his face. Let us pray. Dear Father, Please encourage and place the correct words on our lips to encourage people to enter into a relationship with you. We ask for your help through your Holy Spirit and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will have our collection at this time and our hymn of the day.
Let us pray together. God of all creation, you have made us good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world. Signs of your precious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand if you are able for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, the life everlasting. Amen. calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the church by your spirit. Root your church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade, <coughs> and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forests and wilderness areas. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill, especially Keith, Jan, Dave, Sean, Mark, Julie, Harlan, Beth, Gage, Alex, Maria, Perry, Tanya, Lorraine, Jeff, Alan, and the families of Nancy Nord and Paul O'Reilly. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Please let us join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give us peace. Amen. Last song, the sending hymn, God of grace and God of glory.
Go in peace to love the Lord and serve our neighbors. Thanks be to God.